Good afternoon and welcome to Emma's Crafty Space. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Emma and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in Newton Abbey, Belfast, Northern Ireland. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this very easy shadow box card. Using the Kindest Gnomes stamp sets. Um, there is dies with this obviously and that is how I have them stamp this and then cut this out. The trees are from the tree lot um, dies that were available in celebration. And then there's also these little um, charming landscape embossing folders which are absolutely adorable. The only things are not very big, you know, they wouldn't go for, you wouldn't be able to use them for a long card. So I've used this one here in the background. And then there's this wee one here that has like a little housey scene on it as well. I can use that maybe. Um, I might be able to see it a bit better there on a dark background. So they are very, very cute. And they just add a little bit extra to any of your projects. So I will start giving you your measurements and then we'll start putting it together. So I've already went on ahead and obviously embossed that. So the card itself, um, it's just your standard car size, well, standard in the UK, in the UK here. So it's um, five and seven eighths of an inch by four and one eighth. And then it's the same for your white, um, five and seven eighths by four and one eighth. And then I have scored them at half an inch and one inch. And then I just tilted that and did half an inch and one inch because it was a bit more easier to do it that way rather than having to do seven eighths and things like that and again same with your white half an inch and one inch and then half an inch and one inch one inch sorry then i use the layering circle dies to get to this window and i use the one that measures two it's just under two and three quarters so maybe two and five eighths then I'm round this through the stamp and emboss machine with this folder here. So I'll just put that on a dark background so you can maybe see it a bit better. It's really cute because you've got little snowflakes as well as little stars in it too. So it just gives you a bit more interest for that white background in there in the corner. So just before we start creasing everything up, I just want to lay this down and it's just so you can get your window positioning for when you, where you're going to stamp your greeting. So I'm just using basic grey here, um, but ideally you want to use evening evergreen, evergreen. Um, but I just don't have it to hand at the moment, so I'm just going to use basic grey. And you just want to get the position. And now you're going to have to apply a little bit of pressure here because obviously you've, you're stamping onto an embossed background. Okay. So you can just um, put your stamp now to the side. Now you need to crease. So. Um, this is the front of your card, so if you kind of tilt it so it's facing down and you're going to crease away from you then you're going to come back on itself, so like concertina and the same with this as well so away from you and then towards you okay same with this only it's come towards you here it's going the opposite direction and then away from you okay so again the reverse towards you and then away from you I just notice I've got a little bit of a smudge of glue or something on here I'm just giving that a wee wipe okay so that is, so if you put those together, you can see then if they're going to be like that. Okay, so tape or glue down that side. Now, obviously, because this is embossed, it's maybe just going to be a little bit harder to get that to stick to it. But just persevere with it. Okay. And do one side at a time. Okay, line them up. Say so you could use tape for this, you know, it doesn't have to be glue. Say so just with that embossed edge, give it a good press with your bone folder to make sure that it's really sticking to it. Okay, and then the same on this side here. These little box, this size is ideal because it still fits into your normal C6 envelope. That means you don't have to start making envelopes to fit it. Just 
press those together. Make sure it's flush to each edge. And give it a good press with that. Okay, so that is basically the start of it. Now, if you feel that that's flattened down any, just kind of crease it up again. You can wiggle them around. Okay, so you can see then that's your shape. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to colour in our little person for her hair. I'm going to use light pale papaya and dark pale papaya. Those very conflicting sentences there. So I'm going in with the light blends first. The reason I do light first is because you can always add colour, but it's harder to take colour away. So... This image is actually really good for someone who's just a beginner and like doing their shading, shading especially with the blends because they're, they're doing all the lines for you. So you literally just go down where they've got a line, you put a bit of dark. So it's actually quite a good one. Well, the plant is anyway. So you just don't um, overthink it, just go with it. Then I'm going over that just to blend it all in. And then I'll go over the dark again. Down those lines just to get um, a nice variation and uh, a bit of depth. Okay. So for the hat, I am using light poppy parade and dark poppy parade, obviously. Again, I'm going to go over the whole hat with the light one. Okay, I love the blends. The ink literally just flows into the corners of where you need to go. And then see anywhere where there's a crease, you're going to go dark. And like oh, just around the edges, you're going to go dark. And then we'll go back over it with light again and just see if it needs a little bit more dark then. I think I'll maybe just put a wee bit more dark just on the creases there. Okay. So uh, I know there is skin tone um, blends, but for me, I just think the petal pink's ideal for it if you don't have them. Um, it's an ideal colour for skin tones. I'm giving her flesh coloured hands, but she's actually wearing gloves. But it's up to you. And just those wee dots on her feet as well for her. She's wearing her wee sandals. I might change my mind and go over those hands and turn them into gloves. So I'm just going over here with the dark petal pink. Her pie is nearly blending in with her skin. So maybe a darker orange. If you want, still wanted to go like gingery tones, you could do pumpkin pie or something like that. So I'm just... That colour that I've just used is a pool, light pool party and dark pool party. And then I'm going to, for her wee apron, I'm going to use light and dark Bermuda Bay. I think that is. So there's my light one going in. Oh, it looks very dark. Just that wee trim on each edge. A lot of wee details in these. They're lovely. And then round the edges, just kind of where you think there might be a shadow. Trim on her cuffs, and then we'll do her little hair ties, the poppy parade as well. Shoes, I'm going to do so sweet. I'm not going to worry too much about blending colors into those. That's our finish. So now we have these little trees and you can see these um, pieces are quite intricate and detailed. So I'm actually going to lay them on to, well, first of all, I'm going to poke all my bits out. I want detail on these and I'm going to put them face down. Okay. And the reason being, I'll show you in a second. I have, I have touched on this on my little lantern video there. Um, if you're trying to get um, glue, evenly onto more like delicate or intricate um, pieces 
this is a really handy wee tip okay so you put your um multi-purpose glue onto a silicone mat like that this is a stampin up sponge and you just load up the sponge and don't pick up two of them at once and you put your glue over like that okay the only thing is it does take up quite a lot of glue um to do this technique but it means that you're getting real even coverage and it means then whenever you're lifting these you're not sopping with glue and it also means then that whenever you're pressing this down onto the back you're not getting all the white um glue kind of flooding out from underneath the more intricate part so you can see how much quicker and easier that is because i'm not trying to negotiate around um flooding glue and it also means then your images aren't gooey and sticky and um it's not going to attract fluff or dust so all there is left now for you is to do is to build a scene um, and the reason why I told you to stamp that first was one so you'd know where it was in the image but two so that you can then build your little scene in here behind but not completely obscure your creating now what I will say to you, it doesn't really matter like if I pull that flat you can't really see that because it's a shadow box card whenever you look at it at different angles you can see the greeting so it's not going to matter too much um, you can just stick it on the outside because it falls flat to go into the envelope so it doesn't really matter I just wanted mine up in the back there just for because why not so I'm just going to stick this here and it's just a matter of playing about with it as I said it doesn't really matter if you obscure the greeting because no one's actually going to look at it when it's flat they're going to be looking at it when it's up like that or tilted okay so don't worry too much that your trees maybe you want to poke out and cover your writing. Okay. Then. Just going to cut some of the side bits here. Remember, nothing goes to waste. So I'm going to put one there. And it just means then I've got a, a bit of a base for whenever I'm creating this little scene. That derby tree now is completely supported. Mm. Very bit here. are just to support her okay so it is it's really just about building your your picture and um having enough layers of dimensionals just to give her a wee bit of a support so last thing is i'm going to add a little bit of decoration now i know i embossed the inside but you could technically emboss the outside as well i didn't um because i wanted to add some sequins these sequins are years old they're snowflake sequins but you will have other little embellishments. You don't always um, have to buy new. Um, and you're just going to dot some. Tiny wee blobs here and there. There's a wee mixture of snowflakes. Um, I really need my, my take a pick tool here for this, but I don't have it to hand. Just pick out a load of different wee ones, stick them on. Then obviously these wee stars are going to complement the ones that are in the inside of the card as well. random ones up. So that is our 
my little card finished done and dusted so very cute and very quick and very simple and even better that it fits into an envelope uh one of our standard envelopes so you're not going to have to worry then about um trying to negotiate envelopes and making uh, a weird size envelope for it because it will just fit into one of our normal c6 envelopes so as usual i will put all the materials that i've used in the description below obviously i can't put these snowflakes in because um i don't think they're any longer available um but I'll um, put everything else in there. I'm just going to add this little snowflake because he didn't make it into the packet. Um, and yeah, I just hope you have fun with these. They're so simple and um, you can literally do anything with them. I just thought the wee gnome was really cute with it. So just have fun with it and enjoy it. Um, and the only thing left for me to say is thank you so much for joining me. Um, take care. Bye bye.